and the Irish guy and lads, it's near the end of the Premier League season. I can only smell my predictions from last August. Uh, they smell a bit like an unconscious horse. But lads, it's been a big weekend of Manchester City winning Premier Leagues, minnows cementing European football, and Bolton fans choosing to steal goalie gloves from children. But lads, here is the Prem catch-up, looking at all the results from the weekend. Right, let's go. Uh, I stole this from a small child too. Liverpool won, Aston Villa won. When was the last time you visited Dublin? I mean, easy question to ask. When was the last time you set foot in the capital of Ireland? So, I mean, were you just someone who flew into black pudding at Conor McGregor's pub in the hope that you might be able to find one of his shoelaces in the toilet? For you to sell on eBay to obsessive loners for upwards of 40 quid? Were you in Dublin to see the Spice Girls tour four years ago? Dragged by your mum? And so you spent the rest of the night getting sick on the floor? For many of you, Dublin is not that exciting at all. But for Liverpool, fans. That's now their holy grail. This time last year, Jurgen Klopp was telling those fans to start booking hotels in the Istanbul for the Champions League final. Yeah, Istanbul is a city ingrained into the hearts of Liverpool fans. I mean, forget about the social problems in that city. I mean, sure, it's probably a place where the local butcher skins cats and sells the heads of dogs. But for those Liverpool fans, Istanbul is like Disneyland. But now, a Europa League final in Dublin in May 2024. That has to be their dream now. Because they pretty much officially destroyed their Champions League hopes in a bit after collecting 92 Two points last season. The fact that Liverpool won't finish inside the top four now is unthinkable. And let's be honest, embarrassing. Those Liverpool fans would be less mortified if they'd all collectively admitted to having naked cuddles with their grand. Let me ask you this, when was the last time a Premier League club hit 90 plus points in a league season only to fail to qualify for the Champions League the following year? It's only happened once. Chelsea. 93 points in 2017, then they finished 5th in 2018, just two places above Burnley. For Antonio Conte, that was probably a bit like journalists uncovering that he spent his free time dressing up as Cinderella in his house before biting the heads off Barbie dolls for lunch. It was embarrassing, yes, but Liverpool, that's almost twice they've gone from a 90 plus point season to Europa League football because don't forget, they secured 99 points in 2020, then needed their goalkeeper to score in the last minute to preserve top four in 2021, sneaking in with a pitiful 69. Don't get me wrong, Liverpool were on a pretty tasty run this season. Seven league wins in a row prior to this match, but still. Ollie Watkins misses a penalty, Jacob Ramsey puts Villa 1-0 up, before yes, Bobby Firmino scores in the last minute in his final home match. But I don't care. There are 100 minutes in this game, and you couldn't be Villa at home? Bear in mind, this is the same Liverpool team who stuck six past Man United in one half. These drop-offs are worrying. You avoided Europa League football in 2021 by the skin of a gerbil's nutsack, but now they're going to be in the same European competition as Moldovan milkmen and taxi drivers from Hungary. Oh, but it doesn't matter because we're going to win the final in Dublin now, and all the Irish Reds will be happy. Yeah, don't bank on it. Lads, this is not the first time Europa League finals be held in that city. 2011 was the last time. Liverpool were also in that competition that year, and we're not by Braga in the quarterfinals about scoring a goal, with Andy Carroll looking about as threatening as unbuttered toast. The Europa League has been consistently filled with fallen English monsters for a decade. And yet, Chelsea won it in 2013, Manchester United won it in 2017, and Chelsea won it again in 2019. The rest is just English failure. I don't know, if I'm a Liverpool fan, then I am walking out of Anfield on Saturday afternoon, having essentially seen my Champions League hopes burned in a bit. Oh yeah, and then Tyrell Ming should have been sent off. That I mentioned it, okay? West Ham 3 leads 1. Oh, Leeds. Leeds United. This is a sad day. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not shedding a pint worth of tears into my bowl of Nest Quick. This isn't like a dog's funeral or anything. But maybe. Maybe it's about as poignant as seeing a sick pigeon walking into a wall. If Leeds United go down, I'm not going to spend the rest of the summer wailing to a therapist or sending love letters to Big Sam. I'm not going to offer to buy him a month's supply of chicken pies in order to cheer him up. But I wanted Leeds United to climb out of the championship for years. Just like Nottingham Forest. They were a big monster club who belonged in the top tier. Seeing them struggle to get out of the lower leagues for so many years, it was beyond a joke. I mean, it'd be like if there were five more Batman films starring Christian Bale and in every movie, it was just three hours worth of footage of him failing to climb out of the pit. Yeah, it'd be so boring. I'd probably have fallen asleep in my popcorn and people would have to wake me up by throwing wine gums at my head. But here, lads, they had it all. They had Marcelo Bielsa at the wheel, giving them a delicious, exciting, whirlwind brand of Premier League football. And here they are now, getting relegated with the big Sam in charge. Someone who I know for a fact in this summer weather will largely just think of B.O. and Monster Munch. And uh, forget bringing a lunchbox to work. That man probably works into work with a school bag filled with Greggs. Lads, Leeds went 1-0 up at West Ham. A West Ham team who should be distracted by the European final. Leeds should have wanted this result more. This is an old-fashioned battle between David Moyes and Sam Allardyce. Two moldy dinosaurs who have both both managed over 1,000 times. Moyes is slightly the more experienced boss, having taken charge of 32 more games, but let's be real. These blokes are basically two granddads in their 60s. They used to battle each other regularly for 
Everton versus Bolton 20 years ago. I mean, Moyes took over Allardyce's job at Sutherland and miserably failed. These guys have been around so long that even their wives probably know each other. But here, Moyes wins easily. And Allardyce basically came out after the match and admitted that, yeah, his bench have less talent than a squashed pie. We needed them. Sam Allardyce blames Nanto and Somerville for lack of impact and leads loss. The first will never really show up there. But when we need that squad these days, they haven't quite shown the impact in the short period of time. I may be being unkind to them, but it's only what my very experienced eyes are seeing at the moment. Oh, makes himself sound like Sauron. Leeds are pretty much down, and for a big club like them to last just three seasons back in the Premier League, they should have built on that and put together a plan to establish themselves long term. I mean, why not? We live in a world where Stoke City lasted 10 consecutive seasons in the league. I've seen Burnley compete in 8 Premier League seasons. Wigan Athletic lasted 8 seasons in a row. But Leeds, they're going down after just 3. And in only one of those seasons did they achieve more than 40 points. It's all just a bit sad. Wolves won, Everton won. Don't underestimate just how important a point this was. Lads, He Chang Wang had stuck Wolves 1-0 up against Everton. And it looked like it was going to be another horrific defeat for Sean Dyche. And then Daniel Bedley. The bloke who had an incredible Premier League debut at Man United last week. And goes for a walk out of his goal in 99th minute, allowing Yeri Mina to poke home. Don't get me wrong, Jose Sa was probably doing an inner cartwheel on the bench, relieved that his goalkeeping competition just displayed the intelligence of a mentally impaired duck. But for Everton, every point, every point helps, and this is a monster point. Because what this means, it's pretty simple. All the Toffees have to do is just beat Bournemouth at home, and they will survive. It can't be much simpler or any more straightforward. If you got back to last summer and offered Everton fans that choice, they would rip your arm out of its socket. Uh, it's like if in the latest Saw film, instead of the victims being tossed into a bear trap and being told to chew out their own eyeball to survive, or I don't know, let a hungry panther bite off their foot. No, instead, the way to survival is, um, just to uh, eat a bowl of Cheerios while standing on one foot. Yeah, unless you're Oscar Pistorius, I think you'll be okay. All Everton have to do is just beat a Bournemouth team on the beach. I mean, they're so far on the beach, there's probably sand in Gary O'Neill's shorts. It's a bit bizarre though, because on the final day of the 1920 season, just five days before August, Bournemouth were relegated despite beating an Everton team on the beach. Remember that 3-1 win? And yes, they still went down? Imagine telling the world in three years, this fixture will be repeated on the final day, it's just the stakes were the other way round, while um, both managers would now be in the Champions League. In July 2020, Bournemouth beat Everton and got relegated. But now they can beat Everton and they get relegated. Maybe I'm being too unfair on how easy a task this looks like for Everton. Considering Bournemouth have beaten them the last four times they've met. But if I'm an Everton fan, this is such a straightforward task. They should be fine. They really should. Beating Bournemouth to survive. It's fine being in a post-apocalyptic zombie film and being told to just eat a cheese sandwich and you'll survive. Yeah, it's just so easy. Nottingham Forest won Arsenal nil. Listen, we all know that Arsenal's title challenge has faded into a lump of scrambled egg weeks ago. But Nottingham Forest have survived. Yes! I'm not sure why, why I've wanted Nottingham Forest to stay up for so long, but something deep down in my soul was petrified that Forest will be dumped from this league after a year. Lads, I have waited years and years and years and years to see such a monster Brian Clough club back in the Premier League. I didn't want to say goodbye after just nine months. In the same way that if my dad finally comes home, do I really want him to just get up and leave after a bowl of Rice Krispies? Lads, Forest were scaring me. They went 11 league games in a row without a win. It looked like Steve Cooper had run out of ideas, and instead of looking like a tactical magician was now just some bloke who had his face rearranged with a cricket bat. But no, their home form has been magic. Beating Brighton and Southampton and now Arsenal. I knew they could do it and I'm relieved. I was sick of the championship merry-go-round and repeatedly seeing Watford, Norwich and West Brom yo-yo up and down. Seeing those three repeatedly promoted. Oh, it's a bit like inviting your hillbilly cousins for tea. Yeah, after the seventh Easter in a row, you're a bit sick of seeing Uncle Jim choosing to eat the cat whilst his wife takes a wee in the sink. But no, not like a forest, a proud club steeped in history. They've won two European cups. I didn't want to just substitute them out for a hull. It would be like going to a restaurant and swapping out a steak sandwich for a handful of the waiter's chest hair. Um, no thanks. So thank you, Forrest, for showing loyalty and not sacking Cooper. We get to keep Forrest, yes, but as for Arsenal, a poor defeat, yes. But I mean... The title was over anyway. Man City won Chelsea nil. Man City are Premier League champions again, yes. But I know they easily beat Chelsea with a B team in what was surely the deadest game of all time. The whole match was just a Man City party. That's all it was. With Frank Lampard looking pretty glum, trying to outwit his former club. Yeah, remember when he was a Man City employee? That looked about as weird as seeing David Attenborough bite the head off a swan. But that Lampard was in the dugout for Chelsea when he saw Liverpool basically win the Premier League three years ago. And um, Jurgen Klopp's 
celebration nearly caused him to melt his brain. I know, he was forced to stand there and watch Pep do the same thing. But lads, congratulations to Man City. Enjoy the party and tomorrow, I'm off to the training ground to hunt down Jack Grealish. But weren't City a little underwhelmed that Arsenal lost to Forest? I don't care what you say, nobody wants to win the Premier League title just by sitting on the couch. And I think it's sad when it happens this way. Lads, Lampard himself has said that he was relieved that Arsenal beat Tottenham 1-0 in April 2005 because it meant that Chelsea could go on and clinch the, their first Premier League title themselves by beating Bolton. I mean, if someone like Robbie Keane had just scored the winning goal at Highbury, then those Chelsea players would have won their first Premier League title as they sat on the couch in their pants, covered in popcorn and beer. Liverpool won their first Premier League title for 30 years when Willian scored a penalty for Chelsea against Man City in June 2020. A bit nah. If Chelsea hadn't won that game, Liverpool could have gone to the Eddie Head themselves and won the Premier League title on that pitch. How sweet would that have been for the travelling Reds? Turn up to Manchester City's ground and win the actual league title in front of their fans, but no, Chelsea had to do it for them. And it's not the first time Chelsea have stolen someone's thunder. Eden Hazard rattled in a late goal against Tottenham. I mean, sure, it meant there was lift off at Jimmy Vardy's house. And yes, Rebecca probably tried to secretly film his teammates taking a poo in the bath. But I don't care because that was twice that Chelsea made it all about themselves. I mean, it's a bit like turning up to someone's wedding wearing white. But to me, part of that Leicester fairy tale was spoiled just a little bit. Because that miracle should have ended with those players sealing the title at home against Everton. Instead, the whole thing was just mathematically finished at Stamford Bridge. So instead of seeing emotional Leicester fans crying in the crowd, they were what? Just sitting at home, tucking into a pipe? I can't be the only one who thinks that teams winning the Premier League title because of someone else. A game they're not involved in robs them of their moment. Brighton 3, Southampton 1. Brighton of European football. Brighton have European football! Yeah, um, this is a tweet I made last August. It's gonna be mad when Brighton get relegated after beginning the season like that. Yeah, I said they'd go down. I actually thought this Brighton squad would be kicked down to the Football League second tier. Instead, they're gonna be in the same competition as what? The likes of AC Milan? I mean, I probably shouldn't be too shocked. I mean, the Europa League is a solid competition, yes, but we've seen the likes of Middlesbrough, Fulham, Stoke, Wigan, Portman, Birmingham. Burnley competed this thing. I mean, the side of Brighton playing European football on Thursday nights shouldn't be that big a shock, I guess. But here they were absolutely beating Southampton into a pulp with Evan Ferguson scoring twice. What a legend. But how are Brighton gonna do in Europe? Because those clubs I've just mentioned, it was a mixture. I mean, both Middlesbrough and Fulham reached the final. Portsmouth were minutes away from beating AC Milan just a year after they won the Champions League, while Wigan were beaten by the likes of Zolt Warrigan and Maribor. I mean, that was a collapse. They were unbeaten in the first three European games, but still finished bottom of their group. I mean, what do you expect? They were managed by Owen Coyle. Seeing him coach on a European night, I've been like seeing a middle-aged librarian open for Beyonce Knowles. Tottenham won Brent for three. Tottenham are an absolute joke. Harry Kane scores a wonder strike from 30 yards. Things are going well, and then Brentford, with Ivan Tony sitting in his house eating a pint of ice cream with pins and needles in his hands from going 30 minutes without ringing Paddy Power. Brentford then score three. Lads, I said Brentford would get relegated two. Instead, they're sniffing down European football. It's an outside shot, but going into the final game of the season, they have a mathematic chance of qualifying for the European Conference League. I mean, they won't, they will fall short, yes, but lads, Thomas Frank's record against the top teams this year, they beat Man United 4-0, won 2-1 at the Etihad, drew 2-2 with Tottenham at home, recorded a 3-1 win over Liverpool, nicked a draw at Arsenal, nicked two clean sheets against Chelsea, including a 2-0 win at Stamford Bridge. They've beaten Spurs 3-1 away, and lads, don't put it past them to do the double over Man City when they play their kids next week. Lads, Brentford this season have been monstrosities. And I got it. Completely wrong. Bournemouth, no Man United won. Yeah, pretty simple this. Manchester United turned up at Bournemouth and it could have been a banana skin, but it wasn't. Nine minutes in, Casemiro swivels to smash a bicycle kick past Neto. Great goal, brilliant technique, and yeah, good win Man United. Fulham 2, Crystal Palace 2. Um, both these teams are safe. Uh, Fulham were once kept up by Roy Hodgson during the Great Escape, and now he's done the same again. Um, well done! Anyway, that's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments what did you think of these Premier League results this week. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.